can we use Bitcoin? It's an online currency system. Bitcoin is something that is recent and new. And there are a lot of serious concerns when it comes to dealing with it. Whether it is from the origin, where it came from, whether for, from the aspect of sustainability and security. Not only that, when it started, I think it was like 0.1 cent of a dollar. So one Bitcoin was equal to 0.1 cent, something that is negligible. In a couple of years, it jumped to $35. As of today, if I'm not mistaken, one Bitcoin that was 0.1 cent now is equivalent to $11,000 plus. This is ridiculous. What is this? They are haram because they have no intrinsic value. When we go to the Quran and we look for money in the Quran, we find money in the Quran having intrinsic value and having a value in which the value of the money can be stored over a long period of time successfully. So this is money functioning successfully as a store of value. Bitcoins, cryptocurrency don't have that. I look at them and I say, this looks like casino money because the value is jumping up and down like an Australian kangaroo. Is this a valid store of money? That today the, the Bitcoin is worth $20,000 and tomorrow it can be worth $500? Has, has knowledge and intelligence and wisdom fled from the world that we can no longer understand? That not only does it not have intrinsic value, but more than that, it has a value which is jumping up and down like a kangaroo. That's not money. This is not something that is physical you can touch. It's not a coin. It's not a banknote. It's not a deed. It's not a certificate. It is something that is virtual. It all is dependent on the peer-to-peer, -peer, the blockchain, and the logarithms that govern it which is known to only a handful of people who control it and who are anonymous and no one knows who they are. You cannot complain about it. You cannot pretend that there is justice or injustice. There's no one to talk to. So it is as if you're throwing your money in a vacuum, not knowing whether it will increase or decrease but most people don't care because all what they're looking for is quick profit and gain. That money, in order to be money, must have intrinsic value. The Quran speaks of a dinar, a gold coin. Yes, it does. No mufti can take that out of the Quran. The Quran speaks of a dinar, which is a silver coin. Yes, it does. No mufti can take that out of the Qur'an. And the Qur'an speaks not only of a gold and silver coin, as money it speaks of gold and silver. The biggest loophole in it, that the price goes way up and it can also come way down. So it's like a bubble waiting to be inflated. Also, we also know that it remains anonymous when you deal with it. So it's only a code that you're given. No one can trace it, which means that it's an open uh, a gate for money laundering, drug laundry, drug money, uh, haram money. You can just put it there and no one can trace you. And this is subhanAllah, probably why all hackers, when they do cyber crimes and they demand a ransom, the ransom has to be paid in Bitcoin. This monetary system is bogus, but the money in the Quran can survive for 300 years. And money in the Quran is money you can bury in the ground and put a structure over it to protect it. 
Can you do that with electronic money? Can you bury a Bitcoin in the ground? Go back to Surat al kaf and do your homework. This kind of ambiguity makes Bitcoin haram in my opinion. And Muslims should not get involved in such dubious transactions simply to make a quick buck.